Hi, I'm Chef Alan Burgo. Today, I'm gonna take you to one of my favorite places to gather wild greens, especially a couple ramps, as you can see behind me. I'll introduce you to a few of my favorite species, show you how I process and cook them, and then I'll take you back to my kitchen and show you how to make a traditional Italian dish called prebigione that needs to be made with at least seven different types of plants. Let's go. The prebigione mixture is a traditional Ligurian mix of wild plants. And as you can see, this is an excerpt from one of my favorite books. It says that there's 23 different species that you might find in it. Some places might say seven, some might say 20, 30. Uh, I see the number seven most of the time, so that's how many I'm gonna use. The first plant are ramps, Allium trichocum. These are wild garlic, wild leeks, one of my favorite wild plants in the spring and a favorite of many foragers around the world. There's all different types of them. But I don't harvest ramps unless I see them in a large colony like this, where I can see ramps as far as the eye can see. And there's also some differences between harvesting on public or private land that I'll get into here. So on public land, what you're going to do is just take a few leaves. You can also cut the stem at a 45 degree angle to get a little bit more of the stem. I just take some leaves. On private land, you can dig them, but what you want to do is just kind of thin them. You're not going to remove the whole colony because then there's not going to be any plants to reseed at the end of the year during this or during the summer when the seeds come out. So I'm just going to remove a few plants here, a couple plants there, and what that's going to do is it's going to make some space for seeds to germinate. Uh, the soil disturbance is kind of good for that, and ramps also like to be transplanted. So know that they transplant very well. These are just some that I put into my yard just this year. I also like to spread ramp seeds and smush them into the ground when I see them, just to help them come back, just to give them a hand. Next plant is Virginia bluebells, Mertensia virginica. These are related to borage. Uh, they're a spring ephemeral just like ramps, but borage is one of the kind of key ingredients for the prebigone that most of the recipes are going to call for. So I'm going to use bluebells instead of borage. And you don't have to be scared about, you know, kind of cutting too many here, but I wouldn't dig them up. Stinging nettles are the next plant. And these are used around the world. They're the same stinging weed that's in your backyard. These are eaten as a food plant all over the world. Um, when the nettles are really young, they don't really sting too much, so I don't even use gloves. If it's your first time harvesting nettles, you might want to wear some gloves. I just use a scissors, try to not get pieces of the last year's flower stock in there. Next, Virginia water leaf, Hydrophyllum virginianum. This is kind of an ephemeral, it'll come up as the same time as ramps and the other ephemerals and it'll kind of keep going through spring into the summer and this is a pretty aggressive plant too you don't have to be scared about harvesting too much of this uh, it's also not great for salad this is a green that you want to cook so I'm just gonna add a little bit to the prevagione mixture next dames rocket so Hesperus matronalis this is a a mustard plant that's related to arugula and it kind of tastes like arugula uh, but it's sweeter. I really really like this plant and like the water leaf it's also really aggressive and you can see it in really big colonies in some places so you don't have to feel bad about harvesting at all. I'm gonna look for nice young leaves I'll just cut them with the scissors that's a what's called a basil rosette that I'm cutting from and these will be all over the place in the spring if you have dames rocket it's one of the first greens to come up Next is Sochan, Rudbeckia laciniata. This is a great green with a lot of history. This is probably the most well-known green harvested by the Cherokee. It comes up in the spring, but it's going to go all year long. It'll even come back into the fall. And you'll see that the greens that I'm going to cut here are they're pretty young. So I'm not going to get a ton of yield from this, but the great part about Sochan is that I can cut these greens and I can come back two or three times to the same place and get more greens. 
As the greens grow, they'll kind of intensify in flavor and they'll get bigger, there'll be more stem, and it's all delicious. Really great plant to know. Next is Doc, Curly Doc, Rumex Crispus. So this is related to sorrel, so it's gonna have a little bit of a sour or a tart flavor. I'm not gonna grab a ton of these, but they do make a nice addition, especially to blends of greens, or they can be a really good soup green too. They're traditional uh, in the Mediterranean, and especially in Armenia, I think is where they're known the most, where they take the plants when they get taller and they actually braid them together before they dry them. Now I'm going to wash all the greens. So this does a couple things. I do this with every green that I pick. Washing is going to make the greens get nice and crisp and kind of revive them if they're wilted, but it's also going to make it a little bit easier for me to pick out any kind of foreign particles or debris like pieces of the last year's flower stock or different greens that I picked by accident that were really small. So I'm just going to kind of move the greens around and I'll help clean them. Now we're going to blanch them in some salted water. You don't have to blanch the greens, but because people are pretty familiar with blanching, I'm going to show you how to blanch them. But you could also steam them and the greens will have a stronger flavor uh, for better or worse. But I have some bitter greens in here. so. I'm going to blanch them. Just put the greens in the water, and these are all really young, so I'm not going to cook these too long. This is like 30 seconds or less, just barely until they wilt and get bright green. Then I'm not going to shock them in water, you don't need to do that. I'm just going to let them cool naturally, and I put them on a slanted sheet tray and it just kind of helps the water drain. Then we'll let the greens cool and I'm going to give them a nice chop. You can see the the dock kind of changed color a little bit. It turns kind of yellow instead of green. But I'm going to chop the greens up fine. Then I'm going to add some goat cheese. Goat cheese is not traditional. Ricotta would be traditional. I also have some Romano there because I like sheep milk. A little bit of salt, some lemon zest. I'm going to mix everything all up really well. And then it's going to be time to make some pasta. I have some pureed Dames Rocket there. and. This is a good trick for making pasta. I'm going to add water, a little bit more of the Dames Rocket juice, just until this comes together. I'm using the paddle attachment. Now when the dough comes together, I'm going to switch to the dough hook. And this is going to help me not overwork the dough. I just want it just until it comes together and it's kind of springy. Once that's done, I'm going to refrigerate it for like 30 minutes. And now it's time to roll out some pasta. I also use a lot of egg yolks in my pasta. Traditionally, they don't use egg yolks in pansotti, which is the traditional Prevagen ravioli, but I love egg yolks in my pasta. I also really like my KitchenAid attachment because it's motorized. I used to use a hand pasta roller and they work, but it's kind of hard to do by yourself. It helps to have a helper. So the motorized attachment makes it really easy to make pasta by yourself at home if you don't have anyone to help you out. And I'm going to take this down to a thickness of, let's see, the second to the lowest setting, or the second thinnest setting. I don't want to take it down to the absolute lowest setting, because it can kind of make the, the dough easy to tear, it can make it kind of thin, and it can make it dry out faster too. So just the, just the last, second to last setting is fine. Once I get it rolled out, now it's time to choose a shape. And once again, I'm not going to make the traditional shape because I like to switch things up. I'm gonna use circles. The traditional shape is a square and you fold it over to make a triangle. I'm gonna brush those with some egg white. I'll put a little bit of filling on there. Put the tops on. Now I wanna press down the filling and then make sure that I'm getting out any air pockets. Air pockets can make them float. It can also make the filling explode and come out of them. And yes, I've made plenty of exploded ravioli over the years. I have another fun shape though. I like to make all kinds of shapes. This one's called caramelli, and it's a good alternative. It's also really easy. So I make little rectangles, and then I'm gonna roll these up. Caramelli just means candy. And I'll roll them up and then give them a little twist. 
and what you get is a sort of lozenge shape that holds a nice amount of filling and they're really fun to eat. Kids really like to make these. Next, we're going to make nut sauce. A walnut sauce, to be specific. Those are white walnuts on the right, also known as butternuts. I just like to show those off. We're going to use black walnuts today. That's those. These are ones that I gathered last year and dried. I like to keep them in the garage. Keep them away from the squirrels. I have a machine a cracker specifically for black walnuts because black walnuts are crazy hard to crack. So this thing kind of turns cracking black walnuts into an arcade game. I just put the walnuts in, pull the lever down, and they crack. And once I'm done with a bunch of those, a lot of the nut meats will just kind of fall out. And I can just pick out those nuts but then, this is how professional nutcrackers do it. You can have some that are stuck. So you use a snips. This is the secret. And you just cut that shell. Boom. And then the nut will come right out. And that's a nice quarter of a black walnut. For the sauce, I'm going to toast the black walnuts a little bit. Just some medium-high heat. Give them a little toss. Now we're going to make this sauce. Uh, I've seen this called nut pesto. It's not really a pesto because it doesn't er include herbs, but it's really good. You can see that I was soaking some bread and milk there. There's a little bit of the Romano or Parmesan cheese. Add the nuts. I'm going to add bread soaked in milk. The crusts are removed. That's called molica in Italian. The inside of fresh bread. Great for fillings. A little bit of pepper, a little bit of, a little bit of salt. Now just buzz it all up. You don't want it super, super smooth. It should be a little coarse. Then I'll add some oil. Walnut oil is really good. This is just olive oil. And then I'll refresh it with some pasta water, but I'm not gonna cook the sauce. Traditionally, it's served cold. Now we're going to prepare and plate the ravioli. I just take a nice glob of butter, put it in the pan. I'm gonna cook that until it smells like nuts, just making some brown butter. Brown butter is one of the best sauces for any kind of ravioli. One of my favorites. Now I'm going to add a few morel mushrooms that have been freeze-dried because my morels aren't coming up yet. Freeze-dried is a great way to preserve mushrooms if you can afford a freeze-dryer. Then I'll add a little bit of wine and now it's just about time to add the ravioli boil the ravioli in some water, put them in the pan, toss them around in the sauce. I'm going to add some extra bluebell leaves, a little bit of pasta water, and that's it. And at the end I'll add a dash of lemon juice. Make sure to double taste the seasoning. Now it's time to plate. Traditionally the sauce is spooned over the ravioli. I really want to put it in the bottom of the plate just so I can put some extra things on top. Spread the sauce out and put the ravioli on there. I like to put them in a, in a little circle, kind of overlapping. Now take the goodies out of the pan and put those on top. Morels, greens, and then the brown butter sauce. I love brown butter sauce. I'll finish that with some spring beauty greens and extra black walnuts and a good grating of cheese. The walnut sauce combined with the lemon is so good. The greens and the ravioli, I can taste just a little bit of bitterness. Oh, yeah. Now this is a good spring lunch. I hope you've enjoyed discovering plants with me today and seeing just how incredible they can be if you treat them with some care. If you're interested in foraging, mushroom hunting, and wild food, there's a lot more where this came from on my website that I encourage you to take a look. That's foragerchef.com. I also have a book out called The Forager Chef's Book of Flora. 
You can get that wherever good books are sold. Thanks for watching.